G'day guys, Morsey here. Welcome back to Morsey Plays Minecraft, episode 47. We're getting very close to 50 episodes. Very cool, very cool. Half century. Alright guys, do you know what takes up a lot of shovels? Yeah, it's digging sand. Uh, you can see this area is all flattened off. This is by me harvesting sand out here. Our base is over that direction. You can see the hammer over there. And I kind of am getting sick of running out of shovels all the time. And so what I decided to build was this guy. And this is uh, a bit of a, a concept uh, shown by JL and the Zip Crowd guys. They called it the Sand Eater. And this is just a single module. But I thought I'd just give it a bit of a go here and see how it goes. Basically, uh, it's a little flying machine that will fly along, pick up some sand, and I'm going to show you how it works. Let's see if we can... I haven't actually tested this yet, so hopefully it works. Uh, I might actually get rid of that one, just in case. Right, let's do that, and this. Nope, this. Nope, this. Nope, okay. Uh, where am I? Hang on a minute. This needs to be closer. That needs to be... Where is it? That needs to be here. Totally not prepared. Okay, there we go. Aha! Can you see this? So, basically, what is happening is the sand is being picked up here and dropped onto a rail that is then depositing it inside this hopper minecart. Or so we thought. And yeah, the hopper minecart's meant to pick it up. And if we click in there... Oh, there's no sand in there. No, something's not right here. Something is not right. Okay, let's, uh, let's stop it. How do we stop this thing? How do we stop it? Okay, we got it. Okay, there's a bunch of sand here. That's interesting. I think this needs to be a sticky piston here. Uh, not a sticky piston, a uh, slime block. All right, let's uh, let's just try this one more time. We're nearly running out of space here, so hopefully this works. Oh wait, I need to wait a minute. We need to break these. Uh, sort of. Sort of. It'll stop here when we hit the wall. It's kind of working, and it's kind of not working. Well, it only picked up three sand. I've done something wrong. But you get the idea. So it chews out a long channel of sand. Let me have a little look here. We'll build it and face it on the way back and see if we can get it to work properly. Okay guys, it was quite simple really. I just had my central pillar one block off. So this now should work the way we intend. So we've got the hopper minecart here. And if we do this, you can see that extends the piston here. If we do this, or... No, what is it? We want to do this. There we go. You can see now the hopper minecart is the next block over from where the sand drops. And it's not leaving any sand behind. There's a better view. So the piston at the front picks up the sand, turns into a falling sand entity, which then lands on the rail, which is then broken and becomes a little sand block, which gets eaten by the hopper. And as you can see, the hopper is picking up all the sand. So, um, a little bit slow, yes. A um, bit resource efficient, absolutely. So I'm not building shovels all the time, and unfortunately I've actually already killed quite a few diamond shovels due to collecting sand like this. So that is not a good thing. But that's alright. Um, now that we've got this little sand eater, we should be able to harvest sand a little bit more easily without wasting all our shovels. And let's have a look at the rewards here. Yeah, so we've got two and a half stacks out of that, just one little run there. All I then have to do is break it and build a new one right next to it, and repeat the process all the way up to the end and then back again. So I should be able to harvest all this with uh, without much effort. Okay guys, so all this talk about automating sand harvesting gave me an idea, and this is the result. 
And uh, you know what? I've got an idea. It's going to result in something pretty crazy. So this is an automatic sand quarry. And I just came up with it just as I've been recording this episode. And it uses my elevator piston um, worm design. And as you can see here, we're about to demonstrate. It pushes a row of sand over on top of these rails here. Sand falls and breaks. Hopper minecart picks up all the sand. This piston activates and pushes the slime blocks back out again. When it reaches a point where it can't push any further, it stops. Now this one goes all the way to the end. Um, it is quite long at the moment. We can stop this by going... Yeah, like that. That'll turn around. And let me just put that back on again. As you can see, this guy comes along here. We'll again push the slime blocks that are holding onto the sand. The sand stays where it is until it gets to a too high drop. At which point it falls down and breaks. Resets the system and it continues mining. And all of that is done completely without any help from me. All I did was build the thing. And as you can see, it's actually quite simple. I've just got a couple of repeaters up there. Uh, some immovable blocks along here. Pumpkins work really well. And because they're cheap. And then we've got yeah, a couple hoppers just here and the hopper minecart. And it's very slow, but it does do this work without any use of shovels. So that is really cool. You can actually start this without digging too much. Now, of course, you do need a flat area. So that was one thing I did have already. But I know some of the larger deserts, you can actually get quite large flat areas. So that's not a problem. But yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And then what we could do is, uh, once this side is all expired and done, we could just move the system over to this side and continue on this part. And when that's all done, we could actually just drop the piston down a level and continue. Obviously here we've got some sandstone, so that wouldn't work, but if you had more sand underneath, you would just drop the piston down a little bit uh, and uh, you would continue on the next one. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I might leave this running and see See if it will harvest some sand for me while I'm doing other things. Perfect. Okay guys, so I've left that sand quarry going and I'm going to go back and check it later to see if it's still running. Now the reason why I'm interested in sand at the moment is I do need a bit more TNT. I've got plenty of gunpowder still. Well, there's a fair bit there. And uh, it's always producing as well, which is good. But we need some more TNT because we need to blow up some more holes down here. Now, I've uh, developed a bit of an idea, and I'll run it by you guys, see what you think. Now, you might recall when we were here last time. Uh, there's two skeletons up there. Uh, you might recall when we were here last time, I had the chests here in the middle, and I was talking about what layout might work. Well, I've come up with a layout that's going to work. Oh, there's a skeleton there too. Get out of here. Um, so, this is the layout right here. And it is slightly bigger than what I had before. And as you can see, we've got a few holes. This one here needs to be a trap chest. And these guys here are all just regular chests. And then, of course, another trap chest here. If you guys shoot me while I'm talking, I'm going to get you. All right, so the idea here is that we're going to have four of these columns. They're storage columns. And in between all four, we're going to have this walkway. It's not going to be made out of cobblestone. I'm thinking glass, actually. Make this all out of glass. And these guys will go all the way up to about that block right there. And they'll also extend down by about the same distance again. So it's going to be quite a deep storage room. So we're going to be looking down probably about 20 blocks or so. And here we're going to have this walkway. This is going to be at this level. And there'll be a second one about six or seven blocks below this one. And we'll probably have some kind of spiral staircase or something in the middle. So we can go down. And uh, yeah, we're going to have one in that quadrant there. We're going to have another one here where it's laid out. We're going to have another one in this corner. And another one in this corner. So I think that should look pretty epic, and it will all be centered around here, which is the exact middle of the mob farm. 
And uh, I've got heaps of really cool ideas for this, and it's you'll have to use your imagination at the moment. But what we're going to have is at the end, we're going to have elevators that go up and down on all four sides, so we can get to the different levels. And in the middle here, we're going to have a central item elevator. And I think what we'll do is at each walkway, we'll have a spot where we can put items in. The items will then go up the item elevator, and they'll transition to each of these four tubes and go through all of them in automatic sorting sequence and that should get a really cool effect in the middle here and also that'll be how we put all the items into these chests and to add to that I'm also going to make a furnace system up in the ceiling and that's going to hook directly to our hoppers and pull down sticks we're going to use sticks for the furnace system and I'm going to work it out, I don't know how yet because I haven't tried it, but I'm also going to work out if we put items in a particular chest, they might go up and go straight into the furnace to be smelted, and then end up in the, you know, in the respective spots. So that is the idea. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but we will see how it goes. So that is the idea. So of course we're going to need a lot more TNT because I've got to make much bigger holes. I dug this bit out by hand and it took a little while. I got an efficiency 5 pick again, so that's fine. But it did take a little while to do that, so we need to blow up, blow up the holes with TNT. That's the way to do it. Okay guys, so next thing I want to do is I want to re-enable my villager breeder because based on the last episode when we had those issues with the iron farm, we're going to need some more villagers to keep that topped up until we fix that issue. So I'm just going to put these guys on re-enable this. I couldn't find the other doors that I took off from this last time. Uh, will that work? Hang on, I think I need to place them the other way around. So yeah, we'll do that and we actually might head over and have a look at the iron farm and just see how it's going because I haven't been over since we set that minecart to run. I know that the minecart has picked up all the villages that we had there to pick up so that's good but we'll certainly need to see whether it is still running or not and how many of those villagers actually survived. So, there we go. Hopefully that will start these guys breeding again and I'm just gonna, gonna check real quick to see. Yep, there we go. Love hearts. Love hearts and carrots everywhere. Okay, we're gonna leave that uh, opening the way it is at the moment, I think, and we'll get some little guys. They'll end up here. There's one already. And most of the time they will actually get pushed into that corner themselves, especially if there is already some villagers in here. There we go. So most of them will get pushed in there themselves, and for those that grow up like these guys have, eventually we'll come back and knock that block out and just push them in manually. But I'm going to leave that going for a little while again, and uh, we'll get some more villagers in here, and then we'll probably send most of them straight to the iron farm. But speaking of that, let's go check it out and see how it's going. Okay, so just before I check the iron farm, I was just looking at this uh, ender pearl stasis machine, and I was just thinking to myself, uh, I've been keeping track of the new updates coming out in 1.9, and one of which are the glass panes have gotten a new model so you can see this guy here this is a, a set of iron bars it's in a cross shape when it's not connected to anything and this ender pearl stasis system uses that that little trick with the hitboxes to make this wireless signal up here and that is no longer going to work I would say not gonna work anymore I would imagine so we'll have to investigate to see whether this is uh, going to work in the new snapshots and see if we can come up with another design because you know, I'd like to use this a little bit but I just uh, haven't got it fully set up yet. Alright, let's go have a quick look down here and see if there is any iron being produced. Now I did leave some iron down here so there will be some in here already but I want to see if there's any fresh stuff so let's have a look. Okay, yep, it looks like there is because I think we cleaned out a little spot about here somewhere, and I think I refilled it all up. So yeah, it's already uh, working again, which is very good. And just to be absolutely sure, I'm going to turn these into blocks and put them back in again. And that way we'll know absolutely whether it's working or not. 
Okay, so this is some of the villagers we had in last time. So it looks like quite a few of them are still alive, which is good. Obviously enough to keep it running. So that is a good sign. So I'm going to leave these guys alone. And uh, we'll come back another time and see if it's still running. Alright, so we're back here. And we've got the... All the zombies hanging around, of course. I've just had a quick look down at the villager breeder, and it's working well. And I saw this guy over here on a iron armor guy. Um, and the villager breeder is working quite well. I just made a few changes so that the uh, that the baby villagers will actually get out easier. Man, this guy's strong. But I thought what we'd do is now is uh, head over and have a look at the sand quarry and just check if it is still running and where it's up to. I know it's going to be a pretty slow machine, but uh, still, it's something that can happen while I'm not even there, so that is good, and it saves my shovels as well. So, let's go take a look at that. Okay, so here we are, guys, and it looks like I was just a little bit too far away because this clock has stopped. Uh, I did actually remove the... I removed the clock that I used to start it. Um, that was here somewhere. So I actually removed that and I was just using these repeaters to do the work so that's probably why it stopped. Um, but that's okay. So if I want to restart it I just have to uh, break these guys like so. I'll go all the way out to here. So this would obviously work um, a lot better if it had a chunk loader nearby. Um, or if it was closer to my base, or if I just stayed in this area. Um, but it looked like it worked. it's worked for a little while, um, while I've been away, so just a little bit. And then all we have to do here is just hit that, and there we go, it's working again. So yeah, it's the kind of thing that you would probably, uh, you would probably put this close to somewhere where you'll be for a while or as I said use a, a chunk loader or something to do the work for you so but I mean that's well let's let's see how much sand that actually harvested you know that's uh, two and a bit stacks of sand that I didn't have to dig by hand which is good and it's good, just gonna keep going all the way up here so that's a good thing uh, I like this idea a little bit, and I'm probably going to play around with it a little bit more to make it a bit more sustainable. Um, I think the idea is once you would do this full layer, you can see there's some sandstone coming through, so you'd have to do something else there, but the idea is once you did this full layer, you could then, um, if you put the piston down this level, um, and get rid of some of that sand, then you know you could essentially leave this where it is. So that's sort of the idea. But still, a cool idea, and uh, it just came up out of nowhere, so I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with that. Yeah, it's kind of cool that, uh, that we just made a little sand quarry. So anyway, guys, that'll probably do for this episode, and hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think about my visions for the storage room. I think it's going to be awesome when it's done. I do just need to do a lot of digging and, and uh, demolition to get it to a point where we can use it. But uh, I think if you have a little bit of imagination, you can see what I'm talking about. And you can tell that it's going to be quite a cool looking area. So, um, yeah, that's all guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. And we'll see you again next time.